Hi, good afternoon, everyone. So again, my name is Sam, and I am an architect by trade and a sustainability manager in Arthelan. What I do for the company is that I ensure that our projects are able to be green, uh, to go for green building certification. So today, I'm going to share with you a few of the things that we do in our residential projects. Hopefully, this is something that you can also apply in your existence when you green. And if for those who are uh, for those who are looking into buying a property soon, then this might also be a point of comparison for you to check between properties which one is more sustainable. But before we go through all that, what exactly is the benefits of a green and certified home? One, it saves money. Greening your home means reducing your electricity and water bill, which in turn saves you money. And at the same time, we actually help in creating a healthier planet because requiring less energy and water saves us resources for future use. And it also means that there is less pollution in the air emitted from the uh, power plants and treatment facilities for water. And number three, um, we agree a certified home actually means it's a verified claim. So whatever we say that is uh, savings for your properties, it means that a third party organization has already checked and verified it to make sure that you, you actually get what we say. So the contents of this presentation is I'm going to discuss on how to green your home and identify how much it would cost and bring you savings. So then, we would be discussing five points in a residential. So first is the LED lamps. In a normal property, the, the lamps would be compact fluorescent lamps. But the proposal here is that we upgrade it to low emitting diode lamps or LED because a CFL of 15 watts here is actually equivalent to watts per LED without compromising the brightness of the world. Another key difference is their lifespan. So LED has a higher lifespan. It, ha it can burn up to 25,000 hours, while CFL can actually just do it for 8,000 hours. Another point is that CFL contains mercury, which is a health and environmental hazard. But LED is higher in terms of cost per lamp than CFL. But if we look at the lifespan of an LED, it is actually equivalent to three CFLs. And if we operate the CFL for its lifespan, we actually need, uh, we would be able to use uh, the operating and investment cost would be around 4,000 pesos. If you want to do your own computation based on your um, actual CFL wattage, then you can actually do it. The formula is at the bottom of the presentation always. But for, for LED, if we operate it um, as long as its lifespan, then the, our total cost would be 2,200 pesos. This is actually 44% less than the CFL. But what is LED and CFL in a whole household? So let's take Sabina Park as um, our case study, just to give us an idea on what, how big or how small are we talking about in a household scale. So this particular project is 182 total square meters. Um, it has a four bedrooms. It, is, uh, it has a four and a half toilet and bath, and it is built for around six persons. The project is vying for LEED and EDGE certification. That's why it has, uh, it has been designed for 930 watts total. So referencing from our previous slide, it means we have 116 pieces of 8 watts, if everything was 8 watts in this, uh, in this house. But if it, was, if it was CFL, then there would be 110 pieces of 15 watts. So, Calculating those, in terms of investment in lighting, we would have 11,000 investment for LED. And in terms of operational cost, the annual savings is 11,700 pesos. This means that there is an ROI of less than a year. Amazing. So how do you do this in your home? One, identify if your lamps at your home is LED. Or if you're purchasing a property, you ask your sales if it is going to be delivered with LED lamps. 
because we already know that homes with LED lamps can save you up to 40% of your bills on light. If you want to dig deeper and know how much savings it would actually bring you, then um, you need to know how many lamps there are and at what to what age. If you're converting from CFL to LED and you don't know what are the equivalents, then you can just go to this link. It would show you um, what is the equivalent of CFL for you to convert to successfully convert it to LED. And then given all those information, you would be able to calculate the annual operational cost based on the formulas that were shown in the previous slides. So next is the low flow plumbing fixtures. A typical person actually uses the shower for eight minutes, a toilet uh, for three flushes, and a lavatory faucets for about 30 seconds for 15 times. This data is surveyed of the world, um, and this is not yet COVID time. <laughs> So we don't, so most probably this would be double now. Okay, so if a standard plumbing fixture would have the following flow rates, meaning if we open our shower, then it's going to be uh, nine and a half liters per minute there. Um, but my view in the market, actually there are also plumbing fixtures that is higher than the standards. But if compare it to the low flow fixtures, we can actually reduce it as much as, uh, or as low as the following figures. This time, the low flow fixture for a toilet would have double, uh, dual flush. Um, there are also many other combinations of dual flush, so you have to be careful what exactly is the rates or the performance of your plumbing fixture. So given all this, a typical uh, one person would then consume water, comparing the two, would be 53% savings for the low flow. And just to give everyone an idea how big this um, how big this is, these numbers, this is actually one and a half of the five gallon water, water dispenser. While for the low flow, it's only less than one. So imagine that in a whole household, just for one day. And the um, fixture prices actually are not, are dictated by brand, very much dictated by brand and not by flow rate. So practically, um, why is this selecting your plumbing fixture would cost you almost nothing, nothing at all. Putting it again on a household scale, uh, low flow fixtures then, would, uh, let's take from the data before, 74 liters. So this, built, uh, this house is uh, built for six persons there. I've also added um, the uh, water consumption for kitchen faucet as well as laundry, just to give us an idea on how big the water consumption in, in a household scale. So um, this would result to 17 uh, cubic meters per month of demand. The rate from my NILAD would be 20 pesos per, square, uh, per cubic meter. While if we do this with standard fixtures, then the demand of this house would be 32 cubic meters per month. And the rate in excess for, for the 20 cubic is actually 38 pesos now. This would result to, um, for the standard fixtures, less than 1,000 pesos, and for the low flow, less than 500 pesos. This is an annual savings of 6,000 pesos. This is 60% less than the standard fixtures. But is this worth the effort? One, yes, it does. It is a reoccurring savings for 500 pesos a month. But to give you an idea how much or how big this 500 pesos per month is, it's actually 15,000 liters of water. It's 156 five-gallon container. Imagine that. That's how much we're actually saving. It's just saving water just because we chose the flow rate, uh, the low flow efficient, uh, low flow plumbing fixtures. Now, if this is how much we're saving, we actually try to solve and help solve the water shortage, which we experience now more and more so in the, in, in the recent years where water supply actually is being rationed in some cities. Now, if, we, if everyone in Metro Manila consumes standard flow rate versus the uh, low flow fixtures, this is how much we're going to consume. If the 100% is the capacity of Angat Dam to supply water for everyone, this is how much the standard fixture would consume. This is 30% away from the limit. And in this 30%, 
all the other industries have to share their water demand. Um, manufacturing plants, commercial buildings, everyone will have to fit on the 30%. Well, if we choose to, if everyone can, uh, does their plumbing fixtures with the low flow, we actually widen the gap to 60%. Wouldn't that be great? Everyone would have water for them. Another point is our treatment plants. The, the water that we consume, we have a limit in terms of what we can clean and reuse or to throw out in the body of water again. And not for, for the body of, uh, for the, for the fish to be to allow, to be to live, sorry. So sixty percent of whatever we consume, we cannot treat at the moment because of uh, yeah. But 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 with low flow fixtures, we actually lessen the gap to less than ten percent. I hope this is something that we can think about, and this is recent enough for us to save that five hundred pesos. It's for the good of the whole community. So how do you do this at your home? Are we expected to replace the whole of our plumbing fixtures for the low flow? Actually, there is such a thing as aerators. An aerator is an accessory for the faucets and showers. It is placed there and looks something like that. So if you want to do this, first you have to determine the brand of your plumbing fixtures um, and then contact your supplier to know what kind of aerator would fit into this fixture and then you purchase and install it. You can actually do this at, uh, yourself. And the aerator actually costs only 300 pesos per piece. So next is the efficient air conditioning. A standard air conditioning with uh, 1.5 horsepower has an EER or energy efficiency ratio of 11. All air conditioning has this. It is in the equipment specifications of the of the AC or if you want uh, you can just ask your supplier of what the rating is. Comparing it to an energy efficient uh, air conditioning the same size of 1.5 horsepower it can be as uh, it can also be uh, there is an EER of 12 or for inverter types there is a seasonal energy efficiency ratio SER of 15. Um, there is a price difference of course for these two. And using the lifespan, if these two operated, the standard, the total operating and investment cost for the standard AC would be nearly 300,000 pesos. While if we do it for the efficient AC, it would be 230,000 pesos. This is 20% less than the standard AC. And this is just one unit of aircon. So in a scale of a whole house, again, uh, there would be around seven units of the 1.5 HP in this house and we would get uh, uh, the capital in as uh, the investment would be 28,000 pesos. The operational savings then in a year would be 32,400 pesos. This is an ROI of 10 months, 26% savings. So how do we do this up in our home? So first know what is the ER or SER of your existing AC and then um, count how many they are and what is the SER and EER. If you're going to replace your old AC, you need to know the capacity, the horsepower and the capacity of the existing and it has to be equal. And then if, there, uh, if you're purchasing an inverter type of AC and the SER is not indicated there, this is an online calculator which would give you an idea on what is equivalent SER for you to be able to calculate the annual and operational cost. Next is the solar panels. In a, in, in a typical house like this, um, there would be 36 uh, square meters, particularly for this project, there's 36 square meters of potential roof for, for solar panels. It can fit around 18 solar panels. And the solar, each solar panel can yield about 114 watts. The total investment for this is around 470,000 pesos. But the annual savings, uh, sorry, the monthly savings would be around 13,800 pesos. And the annual savings would result to 165,000 pesos. This is an ROI of three years, just three years. And on top of that, 
you are going to, to enjoy a zero electric bill. So how do we do this? First, you need to know the potential location of your solar panels. It has to be the highest relatively flat surface of your home without any shadow from the nearby buildings or trees. Um, and then from that area, you need to know, um, you would be able to identify how many solar panels you can fit. And then, can, this, uh, can your roof carry the added of the solar panels? Each solar panel is about 18.5 grams. So, there. And then you need to contact a supplier, a solar panel, uh, a solar energy, solar system supplier, um, for you to be able to know how much energy can the panel generate based on your location because it differs. Lastly, but the least, double glaze windows. So, um, physically, it is actually two two glasses that is facing each other with air gap in between. Um, what it does is it stops the heat but allows light from allows light to penetrate the space. Application it is best applied to rooms where people can spot, where people stay for a long time. So it is bedroom, living room, toilet. You expect people to be quick there, so no need. Um, the effects is that the room temperature now is more controlled. It means that the temperature can be comfortable without uh, depending too much on the air conditioning. And as a result, it can give us a lower electric bill. The measures, unfortunately, varies according to location and orientation. And the calculation cannot be calculate, calculated the way that we did with for the others. It has to be done through a software. But studies do show that it can save about 20% of the total energy consumption. So how do we do this? One, you need to contact a supplier. Either um, in order for them to know, um, either for us to add uh, a layer of another glass, because there's already an existing, so do we add another layer? Um, or totally replace the whole window? Or alternatively, apply a low E coating. Uh, this works like a tint, except that it has a better heat reflection and allows more light through. So, summary of savings. If we combine everything that we did, it will result to a, a two and a half years of return of investment. But if you don't want to go through all the details and calculate it, the easiest way is for to find for a home that is a certified green home. So let's start living in a green home to save money for a healthier planet and to be assured of the benefits. Thank you.